Hello everyone, welcome to Twisted Serenity with Mimi. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created some miniature farmhouse tier tray decor. I had so much fun doing these and I hope you guys enjoy them. Let's get started. Okay, so we're starting off with this little succulent planter I picked up from Dollar Tree. This little dowel block that I got from this big bag of um, blocks from Goodwill. Uh, top of a candle. Um, and then this is uh, the cover of a cinnamon roll for the icing pack. And this little printable, printable I picked up from Google. And just a piece of a wood plank. So I start off by scoring the wood plank. Because I'm going to need a piece to go underneath the planter. We are going to make a miniature scale. I've always wanted to make a miniature scale. I have one that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I have one that I created um, myself with bigger planters, but I wanted a mini one for my tier tray. So I start and I glue um, the planter onto the, onto the piece of wood. Next, I'm gonna take our little dowel block and I'm gonna glue it on top of our planter. I'm using E6000 for that permanent hold and then a little bit of hot glue for that temporary hold. Um, I was doing just hot glue at first and it really wasn't staying holding on the right way. So that's why I use both. It'll last a little bit longer. So once I have the dowel glued on, I grab the top of the candle um, container and I glue it on top of the dowel. Look at how cute it looks and we are not even done yet. So once we have those pieces together, we are going to take the icing from the cinnamon rolls, the icing container, and I am going to glue it to the front of our, our planter. That's going to be where we are going to put our printable on. But before I put the printable on, I take um, white Waverly chalk paint and I do paint the entire scale. Now it'll be, it could be easier to spray paint it. I just went about hand painting it. So once it's all painted, I grab my adhesive spray, um, glue spray, and I just glue the little image onto the little cinnamon roll container. That's going to be the face of our scale. Um, I did not want to um, use hot glue because it would be bumpied out. Is that even a word? Bumpied out? Bumped out? Phased out? Raised out? Raised out. There we go. So once it was glued on, all our pieces were all assembled. I grabbed this little makeup sponge and I took some black paint. And I just started to give it like that enamel look all around the face. You know, the top of the scale. And I felt like I wanted a little bit more to it. So then I grabbed Waverly chalk paint. I'm sorry, antique wax. And I distressed the whole scale as well. Remember, if you guys are ever going to do um, any recreate any of these projects, make it your own. Choose the colors you want. You know, choose your style. Always make everything your own. I did it this way. This is my style. This is style I like. I like the whole farmhouse feel. So I did it like this. And that is it. It was so simple. Look at how cute. Such a cute addition for my tear tray. Now this next one. So quick, so simple. I picked up this dollhouse from Dollar Tree in the toy section. They have it with the play doll houses and all that. And I took Waverly really Wax, Antique Wax, and I just stress i mean i'm sorry i painted the whole thing i did like the whole stain look i painted it on and i wiped it off with a baby wipe so once it was all dried up from the waverly wax i took waverly wax Waverly chalk paint the color plaster and I distressed the whole chair. I want it to look like one of those farmhouse chairs You know one of those chairs that have just been sitting out that's so old You know so distressed so antique 
And I swear, my grandmother had one of these chairs when we were growing up. I mean, remember, you just sit on the front porch in the corner. So, once we had it all painted up, Dollar Tree has, like, the best rub-on transfers. These are one of my favorites because it has so many different words. And I grabbed the word fam. Like, family, of course. So, I just transferred that on to the chair. And that was it. Okay, so these wood sticks, I've had them in my stash for so long. I use them on so many projects, and I just have a couple left that I'm about to use up. So I just measure them down, and I cut three little pieces. I am going to make a little mini tray. So I use hot glue and wood glue to just attach them all three little pieces together. Once I have all the three little pieces attached together, I am going to get these dowels. I have... um. These are like fourth inch dowels, I believe. And I'm going to cut them down and place them right on top of my little tray, two on each side. Okay, so I painted it in Waverly chalk paint white. And once it was painted, I just went over the little creases. I wanted it to have that ship lap, ship lap look. And then I distressed my little tray. And then I grabbed my fox leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. And I cut down a couple of inches. And then I cut the ribbon in half. Because we are going to use that as handles. I had made a bigger version of this tray. I just wanted a little version to put on my tear tray. I have seen them online. And... They're so expensive for something so small and something that we honestly could recreate so quick. Okay, now that our handles are done, these stickers, Dollar Tree sold these last year and I grabbed a couple packs of them. And I just grabbed the sticker that said homemade and I stuck it in the middle and needed a little design on the tree. So, and then I stuck the greenery stickers, one on the top and one at the bottom. So once I put the stickers, the stickers were like a little too white, so I distressed it. And I have the little popped up stickers that I'm using them to look like that tack look. And I put um, one at the top and in the bottom of each handle. And that was it. I'm so in love with this. Okay, this one's going to be super duper quick. I have the lantern, of course, picked up from Dollar Tree. And it was already white, but I just went over it with Waverly chalk paint in white and once I went over it I painted I distressed it with antique wax and I painted the top little knob in antique wax and then the bottom frame and I'm just gonna attach a bow on it now I'm horrible at making bows and I don't understand why because I remember growing up my grandmother owned a bridal shop and me and my sisters will always make bows and help her do decorations but now as an adult I don't know what's wrong with me. It takes me forever to do one simple little bow. Okay, so these wood tags, I picked them up at Walmart or Dollar Tree. I think I did. I'm not sure. I'm going to take out one dowel from the pack of Dollar Tree and craft sticks, the little mini ones from Dollar Tree. So I started off and I took the tags and I placed them side by side and we are going to start attaching the little popsicle sticks now you're going to see that I, we're going to make a little crate and i attach four but afterwards it's so small and it, like the, the popsicle sticks are too high so i do pull the top one off so when i put my little plants in there and, and the pots it actually shows so once i have the planter all built up and sturdy i grab two of the bigger popsicle sticks and we are going to use that as the base just to hold up our little plants so once everything is attached in there i grab my dowel from dollar tree and i cut it down and i'm going to glue it into the holes of the top of the tags this fit perfect i was so shocked how perfect it fit inside there it was meant to be now, these little containers I picked up in Crafter Square, and I'm going to use them as our little planters. Um, I just painted all three of them in 
white um waverly wa chalk paint the color white and i do distress them with waverly wax and i do give my little planter box the stained waverly wax antique So everything is all dried up I grabbed some moss and I put the moss inside the little um, plant pot and then I grab greenery that I had left over from a bunch of different picks but I grabbed three different kinds and I stick them inside each little pot and then I stick the pots inside the planter and we call it a day Okay, so one of these little succulent trucks that we are going to turn into a little farmhouse truck for our tear tray. Now you could spray paint this, but I wanted a different type of texture. So I grab Waverly chalk paint in white and I give it two coats of it, basically a clean slate. So I took black paint and I painted the windows, the front windshield, and I painted the tires all with black and then I painted the fenders in apple barrel paint in dark gray. Now I don't have a steady hand by all means so I am a little intimidated by painting but I go for it because I feel when you're crafting the imperfections make it perfect. So I decided to do a little mini farmhouse tier trade decor because I was looking online to grab a couple pieces and it gets pricey. So might as well just grab a bunch of things that you have at home and inexpensive stuff and make it your own. Now I grab my Waverly Antique Wax and I am just going to make it look like it's rusted. It can be that white. You know, farmhouse style, you have to make that little truck look a little rusted up. Now, I printed out Farmer's Market with my Cricut. And I just put that decal on the side of the truck. And then I had a little decal of the little farmhouse animals. And I put that on the front of the truck, on the hood. So I'm a little extra, so I grabbed this little happy birthday headband and I cut two little pieces and I attach them to the front and the back to make it look like little license plates. It is so stinking cute. So Hobby Lobby has all these galvanized little mini pieces. So I had got that for a dollar and some change when it was on sale. The fabric, I cut out the little cow. And I attached some Mod Podge to the front of my little tin can. And I'm just going to attach the little piece of fabric over it. I do Mod Podge over the fabric once I put it on. I distress it with Waverly Wax. I enamel the top of the rim with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink. And that is it. I have a cute little milk can for my tear tray. So I had this little wood piece that I had left over from another project and this welcome decal that I printed off my Cricut. These little wood pieces that I have are basically similar to the paint stir sticks. So I paint our little piece in Waverly Chalk Paint the color white and I distress it with antique wax. I take my decal and I cut it up each letter and I wanted, I was going to put it sideways, but I wanted it to go long, the long way because I wanted it to look like a welcome sign that you put on your front porch. So I transfer that on to my little wood piece. And once I transfer it on, I tone it down a little bit just over the letters because it was a little too shiny. I add some twine to the top of our little sign 
and I grab a little mini block from Dollar Tree and I put it at the back of the sign for it to stand up. So this little house I picked up last year at Target in the dollar spot during springtime and I just started by going over it with white paint because we are going to go over it with antique wax to give it that so once it's all painted I do grab the sand block and I do distress the house a little bit so once that whole process is done we take the new sticker pack that they brought from Dollar Tree this year and we put the one that says farmhouse on the front of the house and then we put one of the rub on transfer words that say home from the other rub on transfer pack on the back of the house so it's double sided. was a tear tray without a rolling pin so this little mini four inch rolling pin i'm going to paint the middle in white and the handles in antique wax those are just basically all the colors that we are using for this whole entire video and once we have it all painted up we grab that rub on transfer pack again and we grab the word family the word fit perfectly on the rolling pin and i like the font because it kind of looks like the ray dunn font so I transfer that onto the rolling pin, wrap it in some twine and make a little twine bow. And that is it. So I grab some foam board and I cut out two circles. Um, and then I have that little spool thingy and it does have two shapes of circles on the top of it. But I wanted my circles to be a little bit thicker. So I grab some spackle and I just put some spackle on the edges of it just to give it like that clean look. I grab those small popsicle sticks, craft sticks from Dollar Tree, and I cut them down to fit in the in-between. We are going to make a little antique spool. So I start to glue all the craft sticks that we cut down all around the spool. I paint everything in Waverly Antique Wax and I distress it with Waverly Plaster and this is so beautiful like it came out so perfect. Okay so this one's going to go super duper quick. We start off with six Jenga blocks. And we attach two, two, two of them together at a time with wood glue and hot glue. And I paint them in Waverly white chalk paint. We are making a little mini book stack. So once they're painted and all dried up, I grab my wood glue and my hot glue and I stack them up together. And once we have our book little stack stacked up, I grab those Dollar Tree rub on transfers again. And I grab the words smile dream and live and i mean these rub on transfers they fit on perfect onto all these little mini decor pieces that i am doing and of course i distress my little mini book stack and of course i'm gonna add some twine to the the left side of the book stack and that is it So we are going to use foam board again. So I trace and I cut out a little mini cutting board. I do the same thing. I add spackle to it. But this time I'm going to put spackle in the front and the back of it. Because I want it to look like wood grain. Once I added the spackle, I do sand down the excess spackle on it. Because it is all bumpy. So once it's all done sanded, I do paint the whole board in white chalk paint. To give me a clean canvas. But I have forgot I did not poke my little hole inside of it so I just grabbed like a sharpie thing a sharpie tool 
I stab the hole and then I grab a paint, the end of a paintbrush and I go right through it. Now I'm attaching Waverly chalk paint, antique wax, and when I'm brushing it on, I'm kind of like, like just rubbing it in. And then I distress it with plaster, of course. And I love the way it came out because it really looks like wood grain. The, the spackle on it gives it that tech like that texture of wood grain on it so i cut out a different piece of the fabric and i just attach my mod podge um to it and then i attach it to my little cutting board and that was it it says farm fresh it's such a perfect these i'm telling you the fabric and the things that they bring into dollar tree they're really stepping up their game So here's another fast one. I grab some twine and I shape it into circles. I wrap it around twice. I add Mod Podge to it to stiffen it up. Now, if you have that wire jute twine, you could use you could use that. I didn't have none, so I did it this way. Then I grab some little boxwood pieces, and I'm just gonna attack attach the boxwood pieces all around my twine, and I'm gonna make a little mini wreath. So once our little wreath form is done, I grab this burlap ribbon. I think I got this at Michael's on sale after Christmas. I cut a little piece down and I attach it to the little wreath, my little mini wreath, and it's my little hanger. Okay, you guys, we're almost there. So this little mini succulent plant I got from Dollar Tree. I'm not even sure if this is a DIY because honestly, it's just so simple. I take the little mini planter. I give it a, a, a coat of white chalk paint. I distress it with antique wax. So once it's all dried up, I pop that little foam back inside there. And then I take some moss. Now this is floral moss. I do change it out afterwards to um, Spanish moss. I like the way the Spanish moss look more. And I pop the succulent back in there and that was it. Okay, so on to the next one. These little square dowel things. They were left over, I want to say from like a picture frame or something like that. I literally saved everything. So they did have like hot glue on them and they had these little staples which I did remove and I sand it down. I want to make a little mini ladder for our tear tray. So I just line up the pieces and I take the little short pieces and I place them where I want them to start attaching it with hot glue. And these little dowel pieces are like a little beat up like they have like some like little cracks and stuff but I like it. It gives the little ladder some more character. So once it's all done glued up, I grab once again white chalk paint just to give it that look underneath. And then once I paint the whole little mini ladder with the white chalk paint, I do go over our ladder with um, antique wax. When I do go over it with the antique wax, I do let a little bit of the white pop through like another piece that's gonna look distressed and like it's been sitting in a barn or against uh, a barn for a really long time okay so I have this little block and these are from those long like wood type of decor they have a Dollar Tree and I had cut some down from another project and this is what I had left over I save everything every little thing that I cut down I save all the little scraps so I just sanded it down and I painted it in white white chalk paint once again and I went over it with Waverly antique wax
this is another decal that I printed for my Cricut. It just says Farmer's Market. We're making a little Farmer's Market sign. And I also have another um, image that I printed from the Cricut of the stacked farm animals. So that's going to go on the sign as well. Once I put those on the sign, I draw a little arrow, just point to Farmer's Market that way. And I just tone down the letters by dry brushing it with um, Waverly Chalk Paint in the color white. And that is it. Okay, so another galvanized piece, a little mini piece from Hobby Lobby. And these little styrofoam eggs that I had from Easter. The Yes, they were already white, but I just went over them with white chalk paint just to give it a little bit more of a clean look. So once they were all painted white, I printed out um, this image from my Cricut that just says fresh eggs in 10 cents. I'm going to transfer those images onto the little galvanized bucket. I'm going to stick some moss in the, there and throw the eggs in and that is it. What I love about all these projects, if they're not free basically from stuff that you have like in your craft stash, they're so inexpensive. All these little galvanized pieces didn't cost me no more than $2 at Hobby Lobby. Okay, so these little, they're like the ping pong balls, but they're the eyeball shapes, um, ones that are from Halloween. And then I cut some pieces of ribbon, and I cut also some pieces of twine, and I Mod Podge all of our ribbon pieces and our twine pieces to stiffen them up. I'm going to make some little base filler balls to throw on the tear tray from a, for a little bit of decoration. Now, you take your little either styrofoam ball, ping pong ball, whatever, and you put Mod Podge all over it. Once you have it coated with all Mod Podge, you start attaching your little pieces of ribbon or twine to it. Now, I started and I wasn't using gloves. This gets very sticky, very messy, so I advise to put gloves on. I forgot to say, um, you want to start attaching your ribbon pieces before... They get completely hard um, with the Mod Podge. You want them just to be a little bit sticky. Now we're going to make our twine one. We did the same thing. We coated our whole ball in Mod Podge. And we just start rolling up the twine onto the ball until it gets to the tippity top. Sorry for the lighting in this video. I don't know what the heck was going on. I think one of my lights went out. But I also did one in the buffalo check that you can see that it's in the right top corner. Which I lost the footage of me attaching that one to the ball. But it's the same way of attaching the farmhouse ribbon that we did as well i did make a couple of each one because i did make some for my daughter as well that she likes to put decor like this inside of her room i got a little smart i put my glove on because i was getting my hands were getting way too sticky so now that I had my ball all done I just took the lighter and I just burnt off the excess twine my favorite one was the twine ball that I made and I painted over it with Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster oh my god I love them okay so on the last one we are going to make a beaded garland now I want it like basic tones like brown tones so I had the ones on the right side are the one natural beads of the packs that I pick up on Amazon that they bring so many. And the ones on the left are a pack of beads that I had different tones of browns that I had picked up from Walmart. I've been having these beads forever and they brought so like so many. So I grab some twine and I just um, take the end of it and I just put some painter's tape 
just to give it that easy point since the little beads are so small and to go on to the twine so i just do a pattern of alternating a couple of the small beads like two small beads and then i take the bigger ones in all the different tones and i just alternate after the two small beads into those i don't know if that makes sense you'll see you can see what i'm doing and and sorry i am a little bit out of frame but you can see which ones i am grabbing and at the end i will show you the pattern of what it is okay so once i have the beads on the twine um i didn't want the garland to be too long since it is just going on the tear tray and everything's mini on the tear tray i'm going to make a tassel so i just grab my jute and i just wrap it around my hands uh my fingers a couple a good amount of times I want to say over 20 times and then I just tie a knot I slide it off and I tie a knot onto the top of it and snip the bottom okay so once it, the tassels all done I slide it to I put it on to one end of my garland because on the other end of my garland I have a little tag that I'm going to attach to the other end as well. When you're putting on ends of the um, on into your garland, always leave a little bit of space so you could adjust your beads. Now this little tag, um, I'm taking those farmhouse stickers from Dollar Tree that we picked up, and it's so simple. And I'm just attaching hope in the wreath, hope with the little wreath form sticker, and love on the other side. And I attach this onto the bead of garland as well. And then I distressed the little tag and that is it. Such a farmhouse looking little garland. So simple, so easy. And I just love like the tones of the different browns and the natural would be color as well all together. If you made it to the end, I just really want to thank you and I appreciate you so, so much. Now for the best part. Thank you guys for watching and remember to turn on that bell notification to be notified when I post my next video. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. And always remember this world could throw you twists and turns but always make good choices. To the next one you guys.